Adeline Bebo and I'm excited to bring you my second installment to my roll series. This week we're talking about elbow pops. If you haven't seen my five universal rules of rolling, be sure to check out last week's video on Fujimi rolls. And with that, let's get popping. <music> first things first, we're going to talk about what your elbow motion should look like. There isn't this big circle that I think is oftentimes associated with the elbow pop. It should really theoretically be you bringing this blade hand across your collarbone and your shoulder, and it should just lift ever so slightly in a very, very small motion, and your elbow should always be flat, providing the baton a really soft, cushy, almost pillow-like landing so you don't get those tiger stripe bruises. One thing that you can do to prevent bruising while you're just starting out and just learning these is by bubble wrapping your baton right here in the middle. While that only provides a little bit of help, it will surely diminish some of those bruises that you get while learning these. There are three parts to an elbow pop that you need to be aware of. The first is the reception. When you receive an elbow pop, you will receive it at this angle, right here in this little nook uh, between your shoulder and your arm. You'll receive it right there, it's going to roll, which is the second part, from this side to this side, and the release. So the reception, the roll, and the release. Once you've got those three parts down, the next thing that you wanna try is just drilling the elbow pop. It is pretty scary at first, because you don't quite know when to put your elbow in, but you want to keep in mind that each and every single elbow pop is always exactly one revolution in the air. And for me, that was one of the trickiest parts to get, but through lots and lots of drilling and lots and lots of goal setting, I was able to be able to master and really detect exactly what one revolution looks like. So with time, I was able to understand exactly where and when my elbow needed to be underneath the baton. By definition, an elbow pop is just a roll with a lift. So when you go to pop the, uh, pop the baton off your arm, it's going to roll and you're going to lift your elbow. You never want to just simply bounce the baton. You want to receive the baton while the baton is at this angle in the air. You give the baton somewhere to lay, you relax your elbow, you give it that pillow to rest on, and you roll and lift. To practice this, you can hold the baton by the end, and I just go like this, it's kind of like a swimming motion, but it allows me to get used to receiving the baton at this angle. Taking the time to understand exactly what happens when your baton hits your elbow and rolls and lifts can help you better understand and better correct when you're actually attempting to do elbow pops. But obviously before you jump into doing tons of elbow pops or even attempt that, let's break it down and truly understand the mechanics of the elbow pop. To do that, your first goal should be to get two consecutive elbow pops. To enter your first elbow pop, you would do it like you would an elbow roll. You'd choke the baton down to two thirds of the way, put your, put your thumb right in between in that nook, and you're going to enter the roll here. And then you're going to work on popping it up. And once you've mastered that little pop, your goal should be to get one revolution. So by giving it a little bit more oomph underneath the baton and really keeping that elbow flat and giving it something to roll off of, you can work up to that first elbow pop. After you've developed the strength to get that first elbow pop in the air, your next challenge is to figure out when you should put your elbow into the second one, into receiving the second elbow pop. And this is kind of scary, but like I said before, you want to receive it at this angle. You don't want to wait until the baton is perfectly horizontal, because when it's horizontal, it bounces up flat with no revolution, and then you can't continue. So the key here is to receive it at this angle so that you can continue that same motion as when you first put on your very first elbow pop. So for the second one, really track the baton with lots of practice, lots of repetition. Track exactly where you can put your elbow in when the baton is at this angle. Another helpful hint that I have is that I imagine that my arm is marshmallow, pillowy soft. That way I don't think about being rigid and popping and bouncing the baton up because then you get bouncy off pattern and frankly, unsuccessful elbow pops. So 
So by imagining that you're just giving the baton somewhere soft to land, you not only protect yourself from bruising, but you give the baton that little lift that comes with the roll. Obviously, it's easy for me to stand here in front of you today and say, oh, just stick your elbow in the spinning baton of death. But that's because I've drilled and drilled and drilled these, and I know and I encourage you to do the very same. Of course, these are pretty scary at first and they can be pretty painful. So using the tip where I wrap my baton in bubble wrap can be helpful. But until then, my only advice to you is to drill, drill, drill. I think that's one of those universal rules of rolling if I remember correctly. But with these, with more drilling, you'll be able to self-correct. If you accidentally pop it one direction or another, a little too high or a little too low, you'll find ways to self-correct and understand the mechanics of it on your own. There's nothing that I can tell you that will make them you magically be able to do elbow pops, but what I can tell you is to practice them. I used to play a game with myself where I would say, okay, today is the day I'm going to get five elbow pops in a row and then 10 elbow pops in a row. And by the end of the year, I was setting goals well over 100. Not only was I building up that shoulder strength, but I was understanding the fundamental timing and finding ways to save each pop, even if the placement was a little off or if my revolution was a little too high or too low, I was finding ways to self-correct. In conclusion, the three main things that you need to remember about doing elbow pops are that you need to receive it at this angle, you need to have a soft, pillowy elbow for it to roll off of, and that each elbow pop is only one revolution. If you keep those in mind and you get to practicing, I promise you'll be able to master those pops. I hope you found these elbow pop tips and tricks helpful. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below to let me know what kind of twirling advice you need next. Until then, thanks for popping in. Oh, yeah.